Tracing the evolution of the human diet. What foods should we really eat for optimal health? It's such a simple question, but a very complicated answer. Let's check it out. Human diets have evolved over millions of years. First, we had the hunt and gatherer, also known as the Paleolithic era. That started approximately two and a half million years ago. They primarily were relying on the hunting and gathering, you know, plants, fruits, nuts, and roots. And their diet consisted of lean meat, uh, fruits, vegetables, and nuts, as far as we know. And then we transitioned to agriculture, which began about 10,000 years ago. Not too long ago, if you think about it. And that was a huge shift in our diet. People started cultivating crops like wheat, barley, rice, and legumes as well as domesticating animals like cows, sheep, and chicken. And this was the beginning of a grain-based diet. However, that was also the beginning of dietary challenges like dental problems and nutritional deficiency. The Egyptians relied heavily on grains like we discussed wheat and barley. And they were also the first society that had dental issues and nutritional deficiency and also weight you know issues but that one is up to debate because we don't really know and back in the days they actually liked to be heavier it was a symbol of wealth and health and now it's quite the opposite and the ancient Greeks and Romans incorporated a wide range of foods, which includes grains, fruits, vegetables, meats, and fish, but also depending on the status. The higher status, the more meat and fruits were you able to consume. And our modern diets can vary, but I think it's safe to say that that include a significant amount of processed foods, tons of sugar, and tons of unhealthy fats. And another issue we run into uh, these days is also many individuals have limited knowledge about nutrition and they make, may make uh, food choices that are based on taste or the convenience, for the most part convenience, rather than nutritional value. And that is a huge issue these days. We rather go for fast foods and sugary drinks for convenient purposes because also it tastes great. But that's also the beginning of all the health issues we see these days. And the next big problem we run into is called food environments. The availability of unhealthy food options in various environments such as schools, workplaces and restaurants has, made it, has, has it made uh, very challenging for people to make healthy choices because we constantly ex get exposed to unhealthy options. And in conjunction with not having enough uh, education in nutrition, makes it really difficult to make the right choices. And then we also have to consider advancements in food technology, which includes the development of genetically modified organism, also known as GMO. And also lately, lab-grown meat are part of an ongoing evolution of our food system. And with our ongoing health crisis we face in the United States, or even worldwide, many people don't trust these food technologies for very good reasons. Especially when a guy like Bill Gates is behind lab-grown meat and also GMO foods. And now let's talk about the latest shift in nutrition in modern diets. Now, these days we talk about lab-grown meat, lab-grown seafood, lab-grown dairy products such as cheese, milk and yogurt, and researchers also working on creating lab-grown eggs. And it doesn't stop there. Some companies are exploring the production of, <laughs> can make this up, lab-grown honey by cultivating yeast cells that produce honey-like substances. That is the future of our diets. And researchers also investigating the cultivation of coffee and tea cells to produce coffee 
and other uh, components that are found in those beverages. And I'm not making even, I, I don't even make this up. <laughs> it is real. And now you might, uh, you might ask yourself, so what is the motivation behind uh, lab-grown foods that who knows if they're healthy or sustainable or not? Well, the official story is the motivation behind lab-grown foods is because of sustainability. And also to uh, reduce the environmental impact of agriculture and also to provide uh, a healthier uh, alternative for traditional food. Now, I'm not so sure if I agree with that, but that's the official story. Now, what do you think we can expect from this nutritional shift when it comes to our long-term health? Any idea? I don't. And now let's look at some of the concerns with lab-grown meat. Assessing the nutritional profile, making sure it tastes like real meat, and also it should have all the same nutritional value like real meat. The safety of cellular growth medium, and also the contamination of bacteria or pathogens that might enter during the production process. All these are concerns. Now let's be honest, we have no idea how our bodies will react to lab-grown foods in the long run because there's absolutely no studies. And two and a half million years ago, from hunter and gatherer to genetically engineered lab-grown meat. That's quite a shift. And uh, keep in mind, remember, some of the first recorded health problems occurred when we transitioned to agriculture, which was a big shift in nutrition. And then we entered a new shift with processed foods, GMO and fast food. And that we know came with a lot of, lot of health problems. And again, the latest shift we enter now is lab grown foods not just meats, also fruits, vegetables, honey, and seafood, and dairy products. So now the big question is, are we gonna go through another crisis where two decades from now, we're gonna find out that that kind of food causes even more health issues? Because looking back in history, as we just discussed, you can actually see the more modernized we get with nutrition, the more health issues we get. I'm afraid to wait what's gonna happen in the next 20 years eating lab-grown foods. Good luck. If you have any questions, let me know. If you need help with nutrition, diets, or any kind of health issues, uh, anti-aging, skin uh, rejuvenation, go to my website, arizonanutritionist.com. Thanks for watching.